Oh, I guess it says on the flap. Oh, there we go. It has a flap. It has a flap. You didn't find the flap until right um, now. and Megan in the restricted section. Today we're doing another big ass library, library sale, sale book, book haul. Because we can't help ourselves. And it was $1 <laughs> and $5 bag day. Mm -hmm. There's like two different sections, like the fancier books and the $5 yeah. one, I guess. Yeah. We went to the $1 area, so right. we got a whole grocery bag. I would lift mine up, but it's ripped. <laughs> so, yeah. grocery, grocery bag. bag like this. Full, Full of books. books for one dollar. The entire yeah. thing was a one dollar. Yeah. So we each got one. And we're gonna show you what we got. Yes, we are. Let's go. Let's do this. Oh, oh. and the beer. Oh yeah, the beer. I always forget the beer. What's wrong? How can you forget me? the beer? It is Sunday after noon, to be fair. That's true. Uh, we're drinking hot box coffee porter from Oscar Blues Brewery, mm. which is one of our favorite breweries. We love it. And, uh, yeah, coffee porter, what more can I say? Turn your head in coffee. <laughs> Wake and roast. Mm. It's pretty good. It's pretty delightful. So, Oscar like, Blues has never steered us wrong. They that, really never have. That's I've good. Alright, so the first book I have is The Radleys. There's a glare. Can you see it? Yeah. By Matt Haig. Um... I think this is about like a family who has some sort of weird secret and there's like a murder involved. I don't know. He wrote The Humans, which we both read for book club, yes. didn't we? Yeah. And honestly, The Humans kind of disappointed me. Yeah. I thought it, <laughs> but it I thought, really cool. Yeah, but and a lot yeah. of people love that book. Yeah. So I thought I'd give him another shot with The Radleys. See how um, it goes. Um... Let's see. So I went to the book sale two days in a row because I have a problem. And so the first day that I went was yesterday and it was half price day. So these are the books that I got for half price day. And I only spent like $5.75 on all of these total. So um, the first one I got is Vanity Fair by William Thackeray. It's an abridged version because I think the original is like really, really long, but this yeah. one's a little shorter. So that's that one. I was <laughs> just going to wait for you to keep going. Oh, no. Um, the next one I got is Like Water for Chocolate by Laura Esquirrel. Esquirrel? I don't know. What, yeah. um, I, I think this is about a woman who, like, realizes she can, like, cook her emotions into foods or something weird like that. Um, well, that's kind of neat. I don't know. I, I've heard a lot of people say it's good, so... Give Whatever, it, it was practically free. Might as yeah. well try it. May as well. <laughs> Not gonna hurt anybody. Um, the next one I got is A Kite Runner by Khaled Hassini. This is a book I need to read for my Read Harder Challenge. And so it was so do as well. handy that I was able to pick it up. Yeah. Next one I have is The God of Small Things by Arundhati Roy. Alright. Um... This is something, I don't, I really don't even know what this is. <laughs> I think it's like, it says, equal parts powerful family saga, forbidden love story, and piercing political drama. Oh, that's a lot of stuff crammed into one there. Yeah, so, and I, I mean, I've heard of it. I've heard, it says it's the winner of the Booker Prize. Okay. So, should be good. All right, that's a lot of bang for your buck there. Um, I also got Animal Farm from George Orwell. I have 1984, I don't have this one, so... It's a cute little, cute little copy of Animal Farm. The next one I have is The Teleportation Accident. Oh, that's not what you want. By Ned Bowman. Hmm. I've seen this somewhere on book two, I swear, but I don't remember where. Maybe Time to Read? Was it you? I don't know. If it was you, <laughs> let us know. But, um... I think this has to do, I don't know, I think it's a, it says noir something, I fuck, I don't know. Fuck, I don't know. Looked cool. It was less than a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be our reason for right, all of for these. For all of these. It was, it's it was less than a dollar. dollar. Um, I also got The Jungle by Upton Sinclair, because I have not read this book yet and would like to. It's, it might be the most depressing book on the planet. 
We'll see. More depressing than The Grapes of Wrath. Oh. And that book is fucking bleak, man. But does it go on and on for pages about, like, a dust bunny or whatever the hell that is? Wasn't it a turtle? There yeah. There's a whole chapter about a turtle. About a goddamn turtle. Oof. It's rough. Uh, next I got Dear Husband Stories by Joyce Carol Oates. Mm -hmm. um, I've always wanted to read some Joyce Carol Oates. I know that she's uh, Conrad from Seven Days at Sea's favorite author. So I thought I'd check this one out. Tells yeah. Hopefully it's a good starting point. Yes. If not, tell me. <laughs> <laughs> Warn us. Um, I also picked up a little copy of The Invisible Man by H.G. Wells. Um, the next one I got is The Whispering Muse. And I'm not even sure who the author is. I guess it probably says on the title page. A? A. Oh, their, uh, their name is just Sion? Sion? I don't know. They're Icelandic. And that's Man. kind of why I got it, because I've never read an Icelandic novel, no. and it's translated from the Icelandic by Victoria Cribb. That's so awesome. So I thought I'd check it out. Fucking right. And it's blurbed by David Mitchell, Alberto Manguel, Juno Diaz, and Bjork. <laughs> and Bjork! Well, yeah, I mean, Bjork, why not? She's Icelandic. Yeah. Um, next, I got Dubliners by James Joyce. I've not read this yet either, so I figured, I mean, if you can get a copy... Oh, and this has something written in the, in the front, which I love used books for that reason. It says, warning, student general has determined this book will depress you because it sucks. <laughs> but... S-U-X. Yeah. Sucks. They've spelled sucks S-U-X, so I don't trust their judgment. <laughs> um, I think it's going to be okay. <laughs> I think it'll be alright. Alright. <laughs> Next I have this one that, I gotta be honest, mostly it's a cover by, <laughs> but it's called Love, Dishonor, Marry, Die, Cherish, Perish. That's a mouthful. And it's by David Rakoff, and there's this weird baby on the back, and um, I don't know. The characters' lives are linked to one another by an act of generosity or cruelty. Ooh. I don't know. It sounded cool, and it's short, so, you know, I won't have to put that much effort into it. <laughs> and there's pictures inside. Look. Yeah. I don't know. It just looked cool. It just looked cool. It just looked cool. I just thought it looked cool. <laughs> um, I got Beneath the Tree of Heaven by David Wingrove. Wingrove? This just sounded crazy as shit. Um, it's about, it takes place in the year 2211, and there's like a ruling class, and I think there's like a coup that starts to try to overthrow them, and it just sounded batshit crazy, and I thought it would be fun. Alright. Alright. The next one I have is Dolly, Dolly City hmm. by Orly Castell Bloom. And I think this is like a dystopian... Um, it says, a city without a base, without a pass, without an infrastructure, structure, the most demented city in the world. So that's enough to pull me in. I'm hooked, yeah. So I thought it sounded cool. Yeah, get up in there. <laughs> Do it. Um, I got A Raisin in the Sun by Lorraine Hansberry. This is a play. Sue got this, I think, at the last at the sale. Last sale. Um, so I think it will be interesting to read. Yup. Next I have The Corrections by Jonathan Franzen. This is an author I've seen a lot on book two, but I've never read anything by him. So I thought I'd check him out. Picked up Beloved by Toni Morrison. I haven't read anything from her and I've been wanting to, so I saw this and snatched it up. Snatched it. Snatched it right up. Next I have uh, Bridget Jones' The Edge of Reason by Helen Fielding. And I can't remember if this is the second book or the third one. I think it's the second one. I don't know. I love Bridget Jones's Diary, though, and um, so I thought I'd try the second one out. Yeah. I'd like I to know. read the book, because I, I watched the movie and was really surprised that I liked it a lot, and so I'd like to read the book as well. I thought the book was just as good as the movie. Hmm. So I have um, The Electric Michelangelo by Sarah Hall, and this is an uncorrected proof, and it says not for sale, but I bought it, so <laughs> whatever. Um, 
And I guess this is a Man Booker Prize finalist. Um, but yeah, it's about this guy who comes to America and sets up on Coney Island as a tattoo artist. I don't know, it's supposed to be pretty delightful, so... Delightful. Delightful. Uh, I got Song of Solomon by Toni Morrison. I've just been collecting Toni Morrison books and I still haven't read it. <laughs> <laughs> but I have, this is the third one that I own now. Nice. <laughs> so, there you go. There you go. There you go. Oh well, yeah. Alright, so I have Sphere by Michael Crichton. Um, I wanted to read something else by Michael Crichton and see if it was any better than Jurassic Park. <laughs> So, hopefully. Hopefully. Fingers crossed. Next I have The Antiquarian by Gustavo Favoron Patrao. I'm, I'm so, so sorry. sorry. I'm so sorry. So sorry. Um, and this is, uh, I think, translated from Spanish. Yes, translated from Spanish by Joseph Mulligan. Uh, I really actually have no idea what this is about. Um, yeah, so I don't know. It says, uh, South American, it's South American, um, about a psycholinguist who spoke to his close friend Daniels, but a psychiatric word for murdering his fiance. Oh, no. Oh, sounds intriguing. I mostly got it because it was translated from Spanish because I determined that I have not read enough Spanish lit. That's so fair. I got it. Good on ya. All right. I got... Darkness at Noon by Arthur Kostler, um, and this is, it says, During Stalin's purges, Nicholas Rubishov, an aging revolutionary, is imprisoned and psychologically tortured by the party he, was, he has devoted his life to. Um, so they're trying to get him to confess to crimes that he did not commit, and he's kind of reflecting back on his career as this is happening. I just bought that last month. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> well, I think it sounds interesting. <laughs> Okay, next one I got is Evening Class by Maeve Benchy. I got this because uh, Amber from the Drunken yes. Library <laughs> loves, loves Maeve, Maeve Benchy. So I thought I'd give uh, one of her books a go. Yeah. I, sure. It honestly doesn't sound like my kind of book, but we'll see. Maybe we shall see. Don't you know? mm -hmm. Um, the next one is, my husband found this when we went on Half Price Books Day. It says, Batman, The Ultimate Evil, a novel by Andrew Vox. Vax? But yeah, it's like a Batman novel. Nice. Nice. <laughs> next one I have is called The Dick and the Devil. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's by Robert... Dicheria? Dicheria? I don't know. I don't know. I don't. Um, but this is about an L.A. cop. Um, let's see. It says it combines the best of the private eye novel with the stunning inventiveness of dark fantasy. Ooh. So, yeah, it has the devil as a character. And a and dick, dick, I guess. <laughs> Actually, isn't that what they call it? Do they call it private eyes yeah, dicks? Yeah. yeah. I yeah, told Sue so. that I would be very disappointed in her if she did not purchase this book just because of the, the t title the of the book. The Dick and the Devil. The Dick and the Devil. I'm ready for it. It's my dick in a box. <laughs> um, Alright, so those were my half price day books. So this is my bag day book thing um, because I have a problem. So all of these books I got in a bag together for a dollar total. Um, the first one is Anthem by Ayn Rand. Ayn Rand? I can never say her name. I don't know if it's Ayn. I hear people say Ayn and I hear people just say Ann. Yeah, so I don't know which it is. Whatever the fuck her name is. Got Anthem. Because I have not read this. I read it in high school, but it's been a while. It's been a few years since I was in high school. Just a few. <laughs> a couple. Just a couple years. Just a couple. Uh, next one I have is The Hypnotist by Brad Steiger. 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 Um, this is just some sort of weird, like, sci-fi horror thing, I think. Um, sounded cool. I liked the cover with the weird eyeball cross and snake. Ah. A spellbinding novel of reincarnation and evil. 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 
I got The Multiplex Man by James P. Hogan. It just looked like a fun sci-fi novel. Uh, the next one I have is Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, a play by Edward Albee. Um, I don't actually really know what this play's about. I mean, <laughs> I, I, I assume it involves Virginia Woolf. I would assume. But I've heard of it, so <laughs> I got it. Um, I'm pretty excited about this one. It's called Hotter Blood, More Tales of Erotic Horror, edited by Jeff Gelb and Michael Garrett. Uh, I was perusing this a few minutes ago, I just flipped to a random page, and it was about a woman using a very large metal <laughs> sexual aid, <laughs> if you will. So, yes. That one's going to be awesome. Going to be interesting. Um, I got Gateway by Frederick Pohl. Um, I know Frederick Pohl is, I think, pretty well known in the sci-fi world, and this says Hugo and Nebula award-winning novel. So I thought I'd check it out. Yes. And it's like, I think it's some sort of supposed to be like a utopian world or something. Hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, I also got The Bluest Eye by Toni Morrison. So there's two of her books I own now that I need to read. Next I have All Quiet on the Western Front by... Eric Maria Rem Remark Remarque I don't know, Remarque. I don't know. Uh, this is just kind of one of those that's like a classic that I don't think I ever read I might have read it in middle school but I don't remember for sure hmm. I'm not sure I've never heard of but it but I've the classic war novel of all time it says oh. of all time the classic war novel of, of all, all time, time. Fuck, man. All right, next I got Desideria, Desideria by Nicole Corner Stace. This sounded crazy. Um, it's about a woman who is brought to a, a madhouse, which I don't think they're called that anymore, but that's fine. I think, so. I think this maybe takes place when they were called that. <laughs> um, a madhouse. And she doesn't remember why she's there, and so yeah. All right, the next one I have is Sea Biscuit, an American legend, by Laura Hillenbrand. Hillenbrand. Um. Yeah, Sea Biscuit. Want to read Sea Biscuit? That's about a horse, I know man. What sea Biscuit's about it's a horse. I'm afraid my Tower of Books is going to topple soon. But... Topple the tower. Oh, that's why I put my beer under there. Oh, got clever nervous. one. <laughs> also smart. Um, the next one I got is The Corrections, which Sue already mentioned. Jonathan Fronson. Oh, yeah. Um, I got, oh, I wouldn't have bought this if I would have saw that. Breath, Eyes, Memory um, by Edwidge Danticat. Um, yeah, I don't, what is this about? Oh, it's about a girl, I guess, who goes from Haiti to New York, and she's trying to figure out kind of what happened in her life and what's going on with her family, and I think she has to go back to Haiti to figure it out. And it says that it's Oprah's book club, which honestly, if I had seen that, I probably would. Oprah picked some good books. Like I've read several Oprah's book clubs right. that were good. All right. Well, <laughs> this one sounded good, so I'm sure it will be. All right. The next one I have is The House of the Seven Gables by Nathaniel Hawthorne. I just, you know, Hawthorne. Hawthorne. I actually haven't read any Hawthorne yet. I really like Hawthorne. I think Jeremiah hates. The Scarlet Letter is his most well known, but that's not my favorite. Well, the only one Jeremiah's read is The Scarlet Letter, and he hated that book with a fiery passion, apparently. He had to read it for school. Yeah, it's not my favorite of this, but... Um, the next one I got is called Lilith, um, by J.R. Salamanca? Salamanca? But yeah, this is about... Lilith is a wildly deranged young girl who creates for herself a strange paradise of sexual ecstasy. A fantasy world of poetry and passion, which she inhabits in preference to the real world of the same. You got some sexy books this time <laughs> around. I did get some sexy books. But yeah, I really just liked the the painting on the dust jacket. I thought it looked <laughs> really cool. But uh, yeah, it's going to be weird. 
All right, the next one I got is Rosemary's Baby by Ira Levin. I've heard a lot of people recommend this one lately yeah. as like a good scary Spooky book. Spooky read. And so I snatched it up as soon as I saw it. Snatch it right up. I literally was like, Rosemary's Baby, yoink! Yoink! <laughs> I have to mention that one because you got that one. Yeah. Okay. Um, I got Her Land, a lost feminist utopian novel by Charlotte oh. Perkins Gilman. Oh yeah. Yes. Yeah, picked this yeah, up. I was me. like, oh yeah, I found that one. That's right. I I didn't get it because I might already have it because I have a book that's like a collection of her works, but right. I don't know if that one's in there or not. But I figured I could just borrow it from Megan if I don't have it. Um, this is my last one. I got Her Zog by Saul Bellow. I just recognized Saul Bellow. <laughs> thought I haven't read anything by him. Uh, let's see, this says, Herzog is the story of Moses Herzog, great sufferer, jumper, and moaner, cuckold, charmer, a man of our time, seeing himself as a survivor not only of his private disasters, but also those of his age, blah, 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 blur, so it's blur. about a man named Her Herzog, I don't know, could be boring as fuck, but we'll see, <laughs> and we'll that's see all I had. I have four more, because I have a problem, <laughs> um, I got Click, a novel by Christopher Young, um, What's this? And it says, well, they put the sticker right over the description on the back, which pisses me off. But anyway, so it's about a guy who, um, it says he's tapped into a strange ability to control the world around him, or he might just have schizophrenia. Oh, so, um, sounds like it'll be an interesting, interesting read with an unreliable narrator. Um, the next one I got is called Faded by S.G. Brown, and this one just sounded interesting because it's about this character called Fabio whose job is, he is fate, oh. and he's getting irritated with his job, and he is, like, jealous of destiny because she gets to, like, give everyone their dreams, and he's like, Meh. Yeah. And so... He's like, sorry, you're gonna die in a car accident today. Sorry about it's it. fate. It's fate. <laughs> so I thought that was kind of cool. Um... But yeah, it sounded interesting. Um, next, I got Luna by Julie Ann Peters. Um, and this one is about a person named Liam. And he's uncomfortable with who he is during the day. But at night, he dresses as a woman and calls himself Luna. And so this is about him getting ready to become Luna, like, full time. And about how his family will receive him. Her son's cool. Yeah. And then... The Last Song of Orpheus by Robert Silverberg, which I will not lie to you, I mostly just thought the cover, or the title sounded cool. Yeah. Um, and I guess it's a retelling of the myth of, or the tale of Orpheus or whatever, so. Cool. Yeah. So that's it. Cool. That's all our books that we got. Oh, we got a lot of books. And I only spent one dollar on all of mine. Ooh, on all of mine I spent about seven bucks. Six seventy five. Still not bad. Not at all. too shabby. So, uh, how about this beer? This eh? beer, this beer, eh? It's pretty delicious. I like it. I think it's pretty tasty. I if agree. you like coffee and you like beer, if you can't decide if you want to drink box. coffee or beer, yeah, then drink this one. Unless it's like eight in the morning, in which case don't go for the coffee. Yeah. Unless you like work nights and you get off work at like seven. That and have beer at eight a.m. Yep. Yeah, then do that. That's fine. Um, yeah, it's pretty tasty though. I mean, Oscar Blues is just a really good brewery. Like, if yeah. you have Oscar Blues in your area, just get it. <laughs> yeah, just do it. They've just never let it. us down. Just do it. It's what you want. All right, so that was our book haul. That was our book haul. <laughs> Lots uh, of books. Yeah, thanks everyone for watching. Yes, as usual, there will be links below where you can find us elsewhere on social media. And if you have not subscribed yet, please do, do it. And we'll see you guys next time. Bye! Bye.